Let's talk about object-oriented programming for a few minutes, which is chapter 14. There's not an assignment to do in chapter 14 or a test in chapter 14, but you need to be aware of object-oriented programming. So that there's, because I removed the, those items from there. Um, what we've looked at through the rest of the course was procedure programming, procedural programming. Um, with it, we worked from a top to a bottom approach and that everything occurred in the same set of steps each time sequentially the same way. Now we did build some ifs in there and do whiles and stuff that allowed things to be done slightly differently but you were working top down and that it was the same basic sequence to it each time. Object oriented, <clears throat> which is a newer way of doing programming, although you still got plenty of plenty of things are going to work in procedural programming and you're actually going to do procedural programming inside of object programming is that now you're also doing some object-oriented programming. Um, people that just knew procedural programming is a big hurdle for them to jump to get into object programming. Um, but with object programming, it's going to be more real, real, real world. So for instance, give a real world example of something that would fit better object than procedural is that for instance if you think about getting up in the morning if we did it the way we've already done it I'm gonna walk over and get that if I'm not careful. I just saw it sitting back there and went Wait a minute. Um, when you get up in the morning, do we all three do exactly the same steps each morning in the same order when we get up? Probably not. Probably do basically the same things, but we do them in different orders. And the way that we looked at the programming already in the procedural one, everything's done in a specific order. So in procedural, everybody, when the alarm clock goes off, depending on how we wrote the procedure, if we wrote the procedure, if we did it procedural, it may well be the first thing you gotta do is shut off the alarm clock, go to the bathroom, go eat breakfast, take a shower, get dressed through the morning. Okay? That may not be the order you do things in. Alarm clock goes off. Some of you may get up, go to the bathroom, and come back and turn the alarm off instead of turning the alarm off first. Some of you may go downstairs or go to the kitchen, wherever it is, <clears throat> and eat breakfast and then go to the bathroom. Some of you may actually have taken a shower the night before so there's not even a shower in the input situation in the whole route in the morning. So in real life, there's lots of objects of things we do out there. But exactly how we do them and the order we do them and will vary. Does everybody follow on that? So object-oriented programming is going to be more real life. It's going to be like real life. Okay. Procedural does fit somewhat to life, but not really. Because in real life, we do things as things happen and relate it to us, okay? Procedural says it's gonna be this way and that we always encounter exactly the same way on it. Well, that just doesn't work on us. Because when y'all go to leave, we all go to leave the school today at which each point we go to leave. 
some of us when we go to leave there may be a traffic jam out there on 151 this morning when I got to school there was one trying to back up to the corner or it was backed up almost down there to that corner and you may have to sit in traffic for a good while waiting for the traffic jam maybe that when you leave the road's completely clear out there and you pull out and there is no traffic on the road sort of unlikely but it may happen okay so it's going to vary on how we all have to react to different things at different points okay so object oriented is taking a real life approach to it procedural <clears throat> had a certain simplification to it because we said everything gets done just like this well if you think about it there are things in life that you do the same way going to college there's a certain procedural approach to it now there's some object oriented to it but there's a certain procedural you had to apply to the college that was the first thing you had to be accepted couldn't be accepted until you applied so those steps had to occur in that order okay and then you had to come register although I get students sometimes that do it and they're object oriented one and they'll have people show up and go they want to register have you been accepted yet what do you mean accepted okay Did, when you applied have you heard back from them applied yeah you got to do an application first <clears throat> until they apply and they get accepted I can't register them okay likewise what do you got to do after you register you got to go pay your bill right so there's another step that falls in that order always and then the next thing basically is you start the class and somewhere along the way that finally you finish your last class you graduate so we finished it through and so it worked pretty much procedurally but it wasn't really procedural all in there a student could take a semester off so taking classes isn't always one right after another sometimes it varies so taking classes is an object that gets called at different times as it's needed um, somebody may drop out and not ever even finish so there's stop some are going to have other things sometimes but part of it follows procedurally and that we can do it basically procedurally look at that one we look at other things in life like I said getting up in the morning really is more object oriented than procedural oriented because everybody's going to be doing slightly different because it may be that you're the kind of person that when the alarm goes off you jump up get dressed and head off to wherever it is you're supposed to go and that's all you do okay um, and then so the steps vary on that so object-oriented programming which you also see referred to as OOP o -O -P, is just where you create the various objects that's going to be used and you call them as needed and they may not come up in order okay so if you're writing a program where people put orders in that they can jump around in terms of what they're doing or websites not everyone's going to go through the same direction looking at a website normally right now there's some websites you have to go through it procedurally but most websites you jump around on think about a news website it's got lots of different objects sitting out there the news stories but it's very unlikely you're gonna have two people look at those same look at those news stories in the same order and so it jumps all over the place so it's really a object approach on it instead of a procedural approach the other part is with object programming you can write objects out there that get called by your program and you can share them with other programs that use that same object sort of like procedures and functions that we talked about in procedural really like functions in procedural but different because it can do more than what was there 
okay? But it's sort of expanding upon the same approach. But object programming is where things do not occur. Now, within the object, it's usually a procedural approach to the programming within the object itself. So, that means all of the stuff that I already taught you about procedural programming is still all used, which is the reason that today we're really more in an object-oriented programming approach that um, you still got the books are, as far as learning how to design programs are working from a procedural approach and then talk about object later on is because everything's going to use a procedural approach within it. It's just a question of, as you look at the bigger thing, is it an object or a procedure? Um, when I wrote my student records program, I wrote it in a procedural way, but it would have really worked better as an object program because I ended up writing lots of subroutines through it that would have worked better as objects out there and not this whole big program running all at one time, but a smaller program that then if they chose whichever item on their index that on it that they should have been doing separately. So it would have been a much more efficient program written as an object-oriented program. That the transcript section, instead of being a part of that massive program, have been a separate object sitting out there. And only when they needed to write to print a transcript would they go over to going to print transcripts to that object. And the, otherwise, they wouldn't do it. If they were entering new applications, they'd just call the appropriate objects. So I wrote it sort of in an object-oriented way, but it wasn't really objects. It was procedural on it. So with object-oriented programming, it is the way of the future on it, okay? And that you're going to see more and more. But procedural programming is behind it all. Now, Traditional languages are procedural. Some languages you can do procedural and object in them. So that when you look at some, they're that way. If you look at Java, it can be a procedural language or it can be an object language. And you'll see both ways used on that one. If you go out there, think right now. Um, some of your visual languages are going to give you the combinations also, but they're going to tend to be more object-oriented to it. Um, C language will be a procedural language, but C sharp and C plus are going to be object-oriented languages. Does everybody follow with me on that? But they're going to be, although they're going to be procedural within it, and in the case of like C sharp and C plus, they're based off of C and they're going to have the procedural part of C within the objects, but they're going to be object building to it. Uh, a lot of your mobile type things that are being built are going to be built as an object approach. So you've got lots of things out there to use on it. But the big, one of the big advantages of object is you create those objects and then when you do other programs that would do the same thing, you can reuse that object over into that other program. And guess what? You just saved work and you can get the project done that much sooner because you got parts already done on it. All right, questions about object-oriented program? Um, Java, 
Is there anything other than just C and C plus? Hmm? Uh, the language is just C and C plus, right? There's not anything else, right? Or Java, or, or C sharp. Okay, that was just a couple of examples of object languages, I would say. Yeah. There's lots of other object languages. Well, I know that. I mean, just for Java, though. But Java is going to be Java. C and C Sharp are totally separate oh. languages. Okay? Yeah, I was about that, I was C plus is the generic one out there, or C. Um, that's the object version of C. Um, C Sharp is actually the same as C plus, or real similar to C plus, not the same literally, but is Microsoft's product of it. And Microsoft's done that in a few cases where they've come out with their own language that's like another language out there, and they thought everybody would adopt their version of it because they're Microsoft. Um, but they found out it didn't quite work that way. Um, so that C sharp, if you see one that's a sharp, which has got the number sign, is what the sharp sign, and that's for music. I mean, you all have taken music before. Remember, that's the sharp sign there. So that's why it's sharp and as the name, but you're using the sharp sign for music. Okay? Um, are ones that were just a couple of them that I was just naming off for you right there. Java is a big one, but like I say, Java, you can write it procedurally or you can write it in a object format. Okay? Um, Java can actually play several ways on how you can write that same type of code because it'll work in that procedural object oriented or it can be purely done as separate submodules on it which is sort of like the object oriented and so there's a lot of things you can do with it. That, and that was the design of Java. Java was supposed to be a catch-all language to do all kinds of stuff. Um, if you go to some other languages, older languages are going to be procedural languages. If you hear something about COBOL, COBOL is a procedural language. Okay? Um, and language names are disappearing out of my head right at the moment. So if you all name some languages, I can tell you if it's going to be more object or procedural. Um, but those are some of the big ones on it. Okay? Um, so, if you go on writing programs, you may be writing object ones or you may be writing procedural, but even if you're writing object, you're still doing procedural. You're doing procedural within the object. Okay? And so they, but what it does is it object orient. Procedural was nice and clear and cut, everything fell in straight order and that made a nice way to do things. Um, and think about it, there are some things in life that work that way. Okay? If you were to go join the military, the way the military is going to have you live your life is going to be pretty set much a procedural life. You're expected to be here, be here, do this, all in a certain routine on it and that it's not things out of position on it real life otherwise you got lots of things happening on it all the time and different things jumping in and out does that make sense so object oriented is more real life and that's really where the ideas come from um, so and then they go into some other stuff on it talking about how it's some stuff's hidden etc on it um, But that's just a ways of looking at how it's all treating it there. But a big part of it is is the reusability. And like I say, that no longer is it that got to be done in a certain order to it. That you can make it like it really happens. Instead of in a lot of cases when you programmed certain things to be done in the past that people had to change how they did stuff because then they had to start doing in a very specific order as they did things. With object oriented they can jump around and so if we were filling out a form out there on the web for instance 
object or procedural oriented would say we'd have to go in a specific order through the form filling it out oh, and pass. okay now think about real life on it if I gave you three and me a form to fill out we're going to sort of work from top to bottom but we're probably going to jump around some on it depending on what all it wants on there once our name and address we'll go yeah I can fill that in real quick but then it may be asking some information you're going I gotta think about that so I'll jump on to another section and come back to that when I'm better when I can think better on and remember what it is they want right there the piece of information what Brandon can't remember on and skips over may not be what I skip over because it may be a piece of information I go oh I know that right off I'll go ahead and answer those questions and Brandon says I'm gonna wait a minute to answer those or when you take tests typically that and they can be given to you in a procedural manner because I can actually set your test in Blackboard to make them be given to you procedurally where you have to do question one when you finish question one you do question two but you can't go back to question one anymore it's done and then when you click on you go to question three and you can't go back to question one and two you can't jump forward but you think about the way that I've got the test out there for you you're doing them in an object way because what is the thing that most people will tell you about test taking if you're taking that test go through and answer the questions you know right off right and then come back and work on the questions you weren't sure about and you think about it when you do and if you ever do certification test and I think they actually do it in Blackboard for you also that you can sit there and click to review questions later that you can click check a box there and tell it to come back but some certification exams and I'm not sure ones right now that do it will not let you do it except in a procedural approach the MOS exams it seems like used to be that you couldn't go backwards on them. Um, there's some others I've heard at times and there's something I've taken some that I've taken that would not let me go backwards either that when you answered a question you were done with that question and if you got three questions later and all of a sudden you went well there's the answer to question number two and I'm on question five now that you couldn't go back and put that one on there and that happens on certification tests just like it happens on regular tests that there's questions on there that may have the answer to another question or the information being given there that you go wait a minute I know exactly what the answer was to that other question that I wasn't sure about right there so stuff that's done in procedure and there's stuff that's done in object so both ways are important but be aware of the difference between the two okay and the general idea of what object-oriented programming is although you haven't done design in that specifically but you know how to do the procedural okay but you're going to build them as objects out there and probably the easiest thing with what you've already done is to think of objects like being similar to functions and if you think about it you could have external functions that we talked about that actually fit the same thing as we said about objects right here that can be used by multiple programs for instance the random function and you could write your own functions or now you'll write objects if you're doing object oriented that can get shared not just by your programs but by other people's programs also questions on that do y'all get the idea of what object oriented programming is it's a different concept but in y'all's case you're going to have if you go on to do programming you're going to be doing some object early on and so it'll mix and usually people that are learning object oriented programming from the beginning have an easy time with it because like I say it really is like life in a lot of ways those that have done a lot of procedural programming and then start to try to do object oriented programming it's usually a difficult hurdle for them to cross because I remember when because object oriented programs have really been around only since probably 
probably appeared in the 70s, the late 70s or so, and really didn't catch on till you got into the 80s or so. So what I learned early on was all procedural programming. And I know a number of people that learned procedural programming and never could catch the idea of object programming. Um, once I looked at object programming and realized and saw a few examples like the one I gave you of getting up in the morning and stuff and realized it really was a real life programming that I got going on it and could write programs in object oriented programming just as well as I could I won't say just as well as I could in procedural but similar to procedural but I got a lot more experience doing procedural programming than object programming so I would think I would be a little bit better procedural than object. But that's the idea of it, but then I say, and then other people even learning now, some people are going to think a little bit more procedural and some people are going to think object oriented. And actually it's usually my other experience on that is, is that people that are more business mathematical approach to them are going to think procedural. Art type people, people that tend to like to do some type of art type stuff or whatever are going to tend to be more object oriented because and I think it's partly the way their lives normally fall around and things that they do. Math people are used to being told you do it this step, this step, this step, this step, which is procedural, right? Businesses tend to also want to put it into a step, 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 step approach. Art people think about them quite often they're very um, floating on what they're doing and everything and that they're thinking about one thing one moment and they're thinking about something else the next moment obviously you can picture some like I'm describing right there <laughs> okay and that they sometimes they get accused of being scatterbrained because <laughs> they literally just jump around and object-oriented programming fits right there with them where that's the way that they've been living anyway. You know, that there's other people. If you get around a military person or somebody that's been in the military for a real long time, retired from the military, and try to get object oriented over to them, they have a hard time with it because they have gotten their lives now that everything should fall in a set procedure to it. And if it doesn't follow a set set of steps, but they're supposed to jump out and do something different and come back in and do something else different that doesn't follow with what they were taught to do and were trained to do. And so that can be difficult for some of them. Questions? Because the main thing was off of all of that was I wanted to give you all an overview today of what chapter 14 was um, so that you've got the idea of it. It's really not in the competencies the rest of the stuff we did is what's the required stuff the state says should be covered. But you need to have the idea of object-oriented programming also, which is why we try to put it in here most semesters, but it varies on the semester of how much we get covered on it in the class. And so to allow a little give and take there. So we've gone through it, covered it over, but I'm not going to have you do something in it because it gets a little bit more um, different on that. Okay? Um, and then that gives you this week to catch up. Now, remember, final exam is next Wednesday. Okay? Here. Okay? The Cisco final exam is when again? The what? The Cisco certification exam is one. The, the fourth or the second? The Cisco final exam is on Tuesday. Tuesday. This Tuesday or next Tuesday? Next Tuesday. Okay. Because huh. we're doing cabling, the final cabling lab tomorrow. Okay. That's what I thought. Okay. So Thursday, Wednesday, and here. We won't have class formally on it because at this point we've covered through it, but y'all got assignments to still be working on. Deadline for all of your assignments in any of my classes is Friday night. 
Okay? So we follow on that. And then the final for those two classes which y'all are in are on Tuesday or Wednesday, depending on which day it normally is for you at this normal time. So this one is at 11 o'clock next Wednesday. Okay? Likewise, in the um, installation and maintenance class for the two of you all in there. That's next Wednesday at 11 o'clock. Okay? And then the Cisco one is on Tuesday at 10 o'clock like normal. And that way I've scheduled them exactly the same time you're used to coming on. Tuesday and Wednesday are final exam days. Okay, so I've got them on the final exam days. And then I just scheduled at the same time. So you're not, if, if you're working, it's already the time you were already had requested off anyway. That you said that you had class that it's not, you gotta go tell your boss that Next week's different that I gotta be in class on Tuesday instead of Monday. Well, you're not in class on Monday, but you will be Wednesday. Or in your case, on Tuesday and Wednesday. When they did the schedule, that um, the new way of registering st new students hadn't come about yet, because we've already got the schedule as finalized for next year already, obviously, because it starts in July. Um, and that when they did this year, that in the past, what is on Monday, Monday would have been our late registration day, our final registration day, and that's when new students would have normally registered it. And that they would have come in and then everybody else that hadn't registered would register that day too. So Monday was just registration in the past, and so the day sitting empty on the calendar now on Monday, and so then finals always fell the next two days, and I gave students one more day between the end of class and the final to study right there. So it's still there, but I suspect that'll disappear next year, since now we do new student orientation, and it's required for them to be able to register. Um, Everybody follow on? So that's where I set Tuesday and Wednesday, and that's where initially I had I think I had put out a note out saying this was going to be on Monday in here, but then I had changed it. I changed it to Wednesday because I thought if we had Monday and Tuesday was finals, and then I discovered no, that's Tuesday and Wednesday are finals. And then by 10 o'clock Friday morning, I have to turn in grades. And so I got to get all of the grading done, get all the grades transferred, because like you're in Cisco, so you know how I got to cross transfer them. You two are in installation, and you know where I got to pick them up and move them all across, and then double check that to catch all the people that have done work since I transferred grades. So I got to look through every grade anyway to transfer them as it comes down to it. And since stuff can be turned in through Friday, I really can't do all of that until after Friday. And then like this coming weekend is one where I've got a number of things I'm intending to do. So I'm not intending to do school work, but for a change, I'm not intending to work seven days a week for the school. Um, although I will be online for a few minutes each day. It's Friday. Friday will be a normal day for me, because I've got to go to Kiwanis that day, and then as far as I know, that'll actually be a little slower day. Saturday, Mr. Spurlock's having his Farley Con, of uh, his comic con thing, convention thing up there in East Bridge. Right, I'm intending to go up there for a little bit to see what all he's got up there. And then Sunday, and I pushed and I may do this on Saturday, but I pushed it to Sunday because I think that's what it's going to end up being. Um, NRA is having their big annual convention and their big gun show with all of the different vendors with all kinds of stuff there in Atlanta this weekend. 
and so I want to go down to it. I've never been to it, but it's at the World Congress Center. It's supposed to be a really huge and good thing. Then I know a few people there I'd like to run into down there too. So people from Daisy Manufacturing will be there with their BB gun and archery stuff and other stuff and some other people. And so I want to, that will take a whole day, whichever day I go on. Uh, may go to his thing Saturday morning, I'm not sure. Not sure what time his stuff is, and then I may head to Atlanta because their thing runs from nine till six. I think it is on Saturday, and then theirs is the NRA thing is nine to five on Sunday. I'd sort of rather go down Saturday if I can, because when it gets to being later Saturday Sunday afternoon, there won't be quite as much stuff there because some of them will start breaking down and stuff. Um, Although Sunday will have the advantage of that I don't have as much traffic to fool with. That if I go down s Sunday morning and my intention is to go down and catch the Marta down to downtown to right there at the World Congress Center. And then I can see what the new stadium looks like too while I'm there. But obviously I'll be right by it <coughs> down there and see how it looks. Because when I was down there in the summer for a Microsoft event it was coming along, but it was largely just all steel stuff sitting there and hadn't been filled in. They had all this steel stuff up all over the place. Now to see it where it's filling on in, except for where they're having the problems on getting the roof put together. So that now they're saying that we finished by July the 30th, I think it is, but they're not real sure on that, so they're saying don't tear the world up. They're not going to tear the Georgia Dome down or do anything else on getting rid of it yet until they finally officially move into the new stadium. Because after all, they got several big events in late August, 1st of September. Supposed to be in the new stadium, but if it's not ready, they got to have some place to put those football games. Yeah. So since they still got the dome sitting there that all they've done is basically tore the um, turf out of there so far that they can real quickly that back down and they haven't taken the rest of the stuff out and then after they know that they can start taking the stuff out and then tear it down. All right, any questions? So y'all know a little more about object now. It's not something you're gonna be tested on but you still need to know it. Not everything you get taught it's always tested, but things that you need to learn also, even if they're not tested about it. Every follow on that? So, then on that note, I will let y'all go.